In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install Parrot OS on a Raspberry Pi. I've got various Raspberry Pis here, collected them over the years, but in this example, I'll show you how to install it on a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. Now, rather than just showing you the installation of Parrot OS on a Raspberry Pi, I'm also gonna show you how to get multiple Wi-Fi adapters connected to the Raspberry Pi and use these adapters to attack a Wi-Fi network. Now, disclaimers always, this video is for educational purposes only. Never use bad passwords, like I'm gonna demonstrate in this video on your Wi-Fi networks. Only attack Wi-Fi networks that you own or have permission to attack. This is my own Wi-Fi network. I've given myself permission <laughs> to attack myself. So there you go. I'm allowed to attack my own network because I own it. And I've given myself permission to attack my own network. I'm gonna show you how to use these external Wi-Fi adapters with the Raspberry Pi. Now, in my tests with Kali Linux, the built-in Wi-Fi adapter is automatically enabled, depending on which version of Kali that you install when using a Raspberry Pi 4. What's great about a Raspberry Pi 4 is the built-in adapter supports monitoring and injection mode, but you have to install the correct drivers and that can be quite a bit of work. Personally, I would use Kali and perhaps an older release of Kali with a Raspberry Pi if you wanna use the built-in adapter or if you wanna use Parrot, you're gonna to have to install the drivers. To keep this video shorter, it's already very long. I'm going to show you how to use external Wi-Fi adapters rather than the built-in Wi-Fi adapter. These have longer range and also allow you to implement other types of attacks with a Raspberry Pi than if you use a built-in adapter only. But I'll show you two of the most common ones that I get questions about. Alpha is my preferred Wi-Fi adapter. This one is very simple to use, but only supports 2.4 gigahertz. TP-Link, a lot of people seem to use these adapters. I personally don't like them but they obviously cheaper for some people to buy and more available in certain parts of the world. So I'll show you how to use this adapter. This is a version two, version three adapter. So I'll show you how to install the drivers for these and attack a Wi-Fi network and capture the password. The first thing you need to download is the Raspberry Pi installation software. You could use other software if you prefer, but on the Parrot website as an example, they show us that we can download the Raspberry Pi Imager or Etcher. So I've gone to raspberrypi.com forward slash software, and I'm gonna download the software for Windows. You could download the software for Mac OS or Ubuntu, but I'm gonna download it for Windows, and I'm gonna open up that software. I'm gonna say yes to run the software, and I'm gonna install it. It's a very simple installation. I'm then gonna run uh, the Raspberry Pi Imager software. Now the first thing we need to do is choose an operating system. That's gonna be Parrot OS. Second thing we need to do is choose storage. Okay, so to download Parrot OS, go to the Parrot OS website, so parrotsec.org, click download, and we're going to download the Raspberry Pi software. There are various Raspberry Pi images. The one that I'm gonna download is the security image, and I'm gonna click download, and I'm gonna select ARM64. Now, that's quite a large file. You can see the size 2.5 gig. Now, rather than waiting for what it says here, 2.6 gig to download, I'm gonna simply use the software that I've already downloaded in preparation for this video. So you can see there, it says the actual size per Windows is 2.682 gig in size. So that's the software that we're gonna install. Now on the Parrot OS website, they tell us that we need a micro SD card of at least eight gig in size. Core could be installed on four gig. I've got a much bigger SD card here, but you basically need a micro SD card that you're gonna install the operating system on. So I'll insert that into my computer. So that's been inserted now. So what I can do using the Raspberry Pi Imager software is select the OS. I'm gonna scroll down here and select custom, and I'm gonna select Parrot Security Raspberry Pi Image. So that's the image that we're gonna use, and I'm gonna choose the storage, which is my micro SD card. And then I'm gonna choose write. We're told that the card will be erased. Do we wanna do this? Yes, we do. And the software will now be written to the card. This is the perfect time to get a coffee or do something else while you wait for this to write. While I'm waiting for that to write, I wanna tell you that we've created a PDF file, which you can download using the link in the description that shows you all the steps to do this. So if you want a reference guide, I've added that below the video. That basically takes you through all the steps to install the software. Now with the power of editing, let's get this to complete very quickly. And there you go, installation has completed. I can now remove my SD card. 
Okay, so on my Raspberry Pi, I'll take out the current SD card. This is actually installed with Kali Linux, and I'll put in the new SD card that's running ParadoS. Before I power this up, I'll connect micro HDMI. I'll also connect a keyboard and mouse. I'll just move these pies out of the way. I'll connect a keyboard, connect a mouse. So those are connected now. Now I need power. Before I power it up, I'm gonna run OBS so that we can capture the output from the Raspberry Pi. So I'll connect the power now. And as you can see there, it's busy powering up. And on my screen, we can see that it's busy booting. So there you go, Parrot OS is booting. Typical Linux boot process. And we presented with a login screen. On the Parrot OS website, we told that the username is Pi, the password is Parrot. I'll log in now. So I have to jump to this mouse and keyboard. So Parrot, press enter. And there you go, Parrot is now installed on my Raspberry Pi. And as you can see there, we've successfully logged in to Parrot OS running on a Raspberry Pi. Let's do some tests. So first thing I'll do is open up a terminal and type sudo Wi-Fi to see if we can run Wi-Fi on the Raspberry Pi. I need to put in my password. We told there that the interface doesn't support monitor mode. Now this is where I prefer Kali Linux because by default it automatically works. You don't have to do anything else. But yeah, we probably need to install drivers to get this to work. So what I'll do is connect an ethernet cable to the Raspberry Pi and let's see if we can get the drivers updated and get this working. So first thing, IP address. We have an IP address. I should be able to ping google.com. We'll have to use sudo here. So sudo ping google.com. So that works. What I'll do is clear the screen and then type sudo apt update, update our references. Okay, so software has been updated. I'll also type sudo apt upgrade to upgrade the software. Say yes to install additional software. This is fine. Okay, I'll remove any unneeded software. So sudo apt auto remove. Say yes. Okay, I'll clear the screen now. Once again, sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. Okay, so everything looks good now. Let's try and do sudo Wi-Fi to see if it works this time. Still not working. We're going to have to install the correct drivers. Now I can use external Wi-Fi adapters with a Raspberry Pi. Here are two of them. Alpha network adapter, here's a TP-Link network adapter. I'll install the relevant drivers so that we can get these working with a Raspberry Pi and a TAC, a Wi-Fi network behind me. So let's start with the Alpha. This is one of my recommended Wi-Fi adapters. Very easy to use with Kali. Doesn't work by default in this installation of Parrot, but it's very easy to install the drivers. The disadvantage of this network adapter is that it only supports 2.4 gigahertz. Okay, so I've got it connected to the Raspberry Pi. I'll log in. Password is Parrot. What I'll do now is open up a terminal. LS USB shows us that we have the Qualcomm Atheros or Atheros, depending how you want to pronounce that, communications AR9271. 802.11n network adapter. However, if I type iwconfig, we don't see that in the output. We see the built-in Wi-Fi adapter, Ethernet, loopback, but we don't see that adapter. ifconfig, again, we only see WLAN 0. We don't see that network adapter. So what I'll do now is connect Ethernet to the Raspberry Pi so that we can update the drivers. First thing I'll do is type sudo ping google.com to make sure we have IP connectivity. Put in my password, which is parrot. As you can see there, we have connectivity to Google. So sudo apt update to update our references. Okay, so references have been updated. I'll clear the screen. And now we can type sudo apt install firmware atheros or atheros and press enter. So hopefully that will install the drivers that we need now to recognize this network adapter and to be able to use that network adapter. I'll clear the screen. So iwconfig now doesn't show that. So what I'll do is type sudo shutdown reboot now to reboot the Raspberry Pi.
Okay, so I'll log in, open up a terminal again, IW config. As you can see now, we have WLAN zero in the output. Make that slightly bigger. You can see the interface is in manage mode and on the Wi-Fi adapter, the LED has now come on. So that's been recognized. So I'll clear the screen and now I can type sudo Wi-Fi. Let's launch Wi-Fi to attack our Wi-Fi network. So again, I'm attacking this Wi-Fi network behind me. Wi-Fi has started. I'm gonna press two because I wanna use WLAN one. Monitor mode is being enabled on that network adapter and we can see various Wi-Fi networks. Okay, so I'll stop that. The one we wanna attack is this TP-Link 69C0 and that has a number of six. So I'm gonna select six and press enter. What it's gonna try and do now are various attacks against the Wi-Fi network. So you could let it try and do a PMKID attack, but I'm gonna stop that. And then I'm gonna say C continue to the next attack, which is a WPA handshake attack. This is running WPA2. I've had comments where people complain about me using WPA, but it's actually WPA2. I have connected to that network from my phone and notice it's captured the handshake and it's already cracked the network password. The password for that network is Spider-Man. As always in demonstrations like this, I'm using a simple password so that it goes quickly rather than taking hours and hours and hours. May that be a warning to you, don't use basic passwords like that. Superman, Spider-Man, basic passwords like that, including your telephone number should never be used. Use complex passwords on your Wi-Fi networks. Don't use simple passwords like that because they're too easy to crack. So if I type ls now, you can see there's a cracked JSON file. If I cat that, you can see once again, details of the Wi-Fi network, including the password of the Wi-Fi network. Again, don't use bad passwords. Okay, so we've successfully attacked this Wi-Fi network using the alpha network adapter. Let's use a different network adapter, so I'll unplug that. And what I'll do now is plug in this TP-Link Wi-Fi adapter. So I'll just use an extender here and I'll plug this in. We now have a TP-Link Wi-Fi adapter connected to the Raspberry Pi. So LS again shows us the cracked JSON file. So what I'll do is remove that. So remove cracked JSON. I should have used sudo there. So let's do that again. Sudo LS file is gone. Okay, so I'll clear the screen. IWconfig shows us that that adapter is not connected. So what I'll do, and I know the right drivers, is sudo apt install realtek and 8188. EUS DKMS, so press enter, let's install those drivers. Okay, so drivers have been installed. IW config again, doesn't show that, so sudo shutdown restart now. Okay, I'll log back in, open up a terminal, IW config. As you can see now, we've got WLAN one, currently managed mode. I'll use Wi-Fi again to do the attack. So sudo Wi-Fi, put in my password. Wi-Fi is starting. We could either use the TP-Link Wi-Fi adapter. It's again using this driver, RTL 8188 EUS, or we can use the built-in adapter. So I'm gonna choose one in this case. So it's actually WLAN zero rather than WLAN one for this example. and. I'll start it scanning. So a whole bunch of Wi-Fi networks have been picked up. I'll stop that. In this case, the one we want to attack is number two, the TP-Link network. So I'll say two and press enter. It can do a PMKID attack again, but I'm going to simply continue to capturing the handshake. It actually used the previously captured handshake. So let's do that again. So I'll type sudo remove cracked, and I need to go into the HS directory and I'll remove that as well. So sudo rm handshake, let's get rid of that handshake. So that's gone, JSON file is not there. So let's try that again. So let's go through the whole process. Sudo Wi-Fi again, it's already in monitor mode. So it's scanning for networks. Okay, what I'll do is do kill to kill any conflicting processes. So start that again. Okay, we wanna use WLAN one in this example. Okay, so that's better. It's picked up the network already. I'll press Control C. In this example, it's gonna be network five, the TP-Link network. So you could let it run a PM 
KID attack again. But what I'll do is stop that and get it to continue to capturing a handshake. And then I'll get my phone to connect to that Wi-Fi network. I'll just jump to that network now. Hopefully it'll capture the handshake from the phone to the Wi-Fi network. Okay, so they captured the handshake, it saved it, and then it's running an attack against it. And as you can see there, it's already captured the handshake and cracked it. Again, don't use bad passwords on your Wi-Fi networks. Okay, so in this video, I showed you an example where I used two external network adapters to capture Wi-Fi traffic and crack the Wi-Fi passwords. As always, this is for educational purposes only. Only attack networks that you either own or have permission to attack. I once again own this little Wi-Fi network and I'm simply showing you why it's a bad idea to use passwords such as Spider-Man or other easy to use passwords. Use good passwords in your Wi-Fi network. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and clicking on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bumble and I wanna wish you all the very best.